for those of you in here, we're going to be solving FNAF's lore, or I'm going to be trying to explain FNAF's lore from memory. So without looking at anything, this will probably only be like an hour. Right, let's at least move to the camera. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. I know for anyone watching the VOD or the stream highlights, I know that this is going to be like wild. This is going to be uh, like not make any sense. So don't <laughs> try and correct me. Uh, but chat right now, since you're live, do because that's going to be half of the fun is trying to figure out what is even real. We're going to be writing a timeline of events on this whiteboard and trying to figure out uh, all of this f FNAF stuff. <laughs> Why the fuck do I look like I deliver pizza? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. That's just how I am. So beginning of FNAF, I guess starts right with maybe sometime in the 50s or the 40s. So like 1950, William Afton is born. Please ignore my horrible, my horrid handwriting. Ellen DeGeneres did the bite of 87. Um, okay, let me put that up there, I guess. That's why her show is canceled. Is that slander? Is Ellen gonna sue me for saying that she did the bite of 87? Okay, so Afton was born, William Afton is born. Him and Henry make pizza. Right, so when did that, when was the first thing supposed to be? When was the first, is that like the early, late 60s? Is that when, fina is that when that was supposed to happen? I guess 1969, just because it's so awesome and funny. So yeah, so Fred Bears, the first Fred Bears, then he made, so, did anything happen at the first Fred Bears? Was that when the puppet was happened? I think it is. Okay. You know what? This is all from memory. We're just going to, let's keep it on moving. I don't care if it's right or not. I'm just saying things. Uh, the puppet, Henry's daughter, dies here. Now the ghosts are here. The ghosts have begun. Okay. I think then Fred Bear shuts down. After Fred Bear shuts down, I'm going to get, because of this, the... By the way, the point is not to necessarily get this correct. The point is I want to see how crazy I become. Juniors. No, Fred Bears is still around because uh, because the bite of 87 happens. Or 83. Um, and that shuts Fred Bears down. So there's two so Fred Bears there's two Fred Bears. So we're just gonna make Fred Bears two. Because that's what it is. Fred Bears 2. Bite of 83 shuts down Fred Bears 2. Then, Juniors. Am I right? FNAF 2 is Juniors, right? It's like Freddy Jr. or whatever. That's the whole thing. Then Juniors happens, and... Uh, then Afton kills five more kids. And then the puppet stuffs them. And it means that now we have the original ghost stuffed into the old locations what the fuck is junior juniors is in freddy fazer's pizzeria simulator i don't even know if that i think people thought it was like a bar too so it might not even be real who knows five kids the puppet but then also golden freddy shares two ghosts or fred bear this is so i'm so bad and then the bite of 87 happens which so let's just put 87 here so eight bite of 87 happens and that is what does it in i think the whole thing is that the party at the end of fnaf 2 is where the bite of 87 happens and as we've already established ellen did the bite of 87 so that's solved we solved that one case closed after junior shuts down does it then reopen again with five nights at freddy's one oh no sister i forgot sister location even happened no after fnaf 2 Things kind of broke off, and Afton starts Baby World, or Baby's Pizza World, which then eventually turns into Baby's Rental Service. Um, and his daughter dies? We're gonna run out of room so fast. Oh, so Sister Location comes in after um, FNAF 1 shuts down. 
Did FNAF 1 even shut down? Because aren't the newspaper clippings actually about Five Nights at Freddy's 2? Whatever, man. Baby is now... Okay, Baby's Haunted. Somewhere around this time, also in the 90s, FNAF 1. And... That happens. No! Sister Location has to happen after. Michael Afton realizes he has to go after Springtrap, remember? At the end, he like gets stuffed, and then he has to go after Springtrap. But that's the events of Sister Location. This could still have been started. Anyway, FNAF 1 happens. It shuts down eventually. This is hurting my head. FNAF 1 shuts down, then Afton becomes Springtrap. Then Michael Afton becomes a skin suit. Ennard escapes, then 30 years later, not 30 years later, but probably something closer to like 15. Fazbear Bright goes up in flames. Would this lore include that the five supposed to be golden FNAF one souls get freed in three? Yes, but it's kind of not clear when that happens. Like, does it happen? It happens after FNAF three. So yeah. Or, or it's sometime during, after it's been abandoned. So yeah, uh, souls freed. I'm gonna guess that probably coincides with the fire, just cause that would make it nicer. Souls freed. Uh, so we're we're out of room on this side. So let me uh, switch to the other side. Oh God. Oh God. Um. There's nothing to see there. Um, absolutely nothing to see here. Uh, anyway, let's don't clip it. Sus. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, even the, uh, the, okay. So, where were we even before I did that bit? I forgot. Souls freed. So, we haven't even gotten to Pizzeria Simulator yet. I kind of thought FNAF World was an arcade game. And like, it's like, I don't know, it's meta. I have no idea where that would fit in the lore. We'll have to get back to that. But for now, the, wait, okay. So the first five souls have been freed, but baby, we still have baby spring trap who survived the fire and Michael Afton, obviously, and entered, they haven't been freed yet. So then in pizza sim, pizza sim is like 2030 or something. Pizza Sim happens, uh, everyone burns, including Henry, but that doesn't stop it because the Fazbear Corporation is still going. Because now, all the rumors have happened, Fazbear's trying to rebrand. Makes... VR game. But little did they know, they took microchips from inside Springtrap, I guess. The lore is so stupid at this point. Now Glitch Trap has been awakened. So Glitch Trap is now out there. Henry has been hotel. Henry goes to hell and back. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. You forgot Balloon Boy commits war crimes in the 90s. Yes. So something that not a lot of people know is Balloon Boy was a member of the Bush administration and um, Operation Desert Storm was his idea. So... Now that that part has been cleared up, it just didn't like, it's weird that Scott included that as a detail, but it didn't really affect the lore. Let me just put a side note annotation here. Uh, William goes to hell. William goes to hell is basically custom. I mean, technically he's dragged like into some purgatory created by golden, one of the souls of golden Freddy, but like whatever, man. Glitch trap is awakened. He possesses Vanny, who is one of the game devs. And that's where we are at Security Breach. So then Security Breach happens. So the re... I guess... I guess the rebrand was successful? Isn't FNAF VR Onward just like a different timeline slash soft reboot? It kind of is, but I feel like there is some connections to the old lore. Like it... It could be seen as a continuation. Rebrand went well for Fazbear Corporation. And I guess that means that... They basically started their own Disney World. Uh, predictions for that security breach lore and stuff. I feel like the Fazbear Corporation is going to have a completely different origin. Like, is William Afton even going to be the same, like, small business guy? Or is he going to be, like, a Disney figure? That would be crazy. They re... Because it's a soft reboot, they make William Afton, like... Oh, yeah, Afton. He's, like, saying... It's like saying Walt Disney. 
is like saying William Afton. Um, let's just really quickly recap what lore we've gotten down so far. Um, wouldn't it be so cool if I had somehow secretly switched this to be FNAF born? So when I switched it back, it did the same bit again. I know that's like physically impossible, but it'd be funny. Don't say invented. I vent. <gasps> That wasn't worth it. That joke wasn't worth it, worth it at all. You did get me and it pisses me off. So yeah, FNAF 1 to Ultimate Custom Night in FNAF VR is considered as video games with false lore. I think it, it's an interesting twist in concept like, oh, it's not all a dream. You were playing a video game that exists in universe, but it's also kind of like, okay, what was the point of doing all of that lore research? Oh my God, look at my posture. What the fuck? The Fredbear plush is, is the puppet. You're setting the pieces up through an arcade game. So meta arcade for freeing the souls. I think that's what happens with the clock ending. Also Fritz Smith could be phone guy. Seventh night you play as him, no phone call. That actually makes sense. Cause there's no phone call and doesn't he say at some point that he's gonna take over the job? Like he's gonna, he's gonna be, he's switching the main character. He's switching the FNAF 2 guard to the day shift. And that is when people think the bite of 87 happens. And then he's gonna take over the job. So night, so wait, do we have a name for phone guy then? That seems like how did no, I've never heard that before, but it makes complete sense. The real question is if Freddy is a girl, do I know, is this a, is this an account that from someone who's I know in real life, there's no way someone just pulled out the is Freddy a girl deep cut out of nowhere. So the box, here we go. This is the big one. What if it's a metaphor for the spirits? Well, that's what, that's the thing. That's what game theory said. Game theory said the box was all of the animatronics at the end burning down. The thing is, what shitty FNAF Funko merch is in the chest? Okay, yeah, as Markiplier's friend said, they both have a key. That is something I brought to my FNAF 4 thing. That is one of my favorite moments of just Five Nights at Freddy's in general. Is just like, well, there's two keys. Were there two creators? And it was like, yes, there are. And then like, I mean, I still don't know what it really means. But it's really cool, this idea that could mean something. Let's be real, knowing Scott, there's probably some dumb shit in the box. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think the box matched the description in the book where it had the robot protagonist. But no, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think at this point, the box is probably related to the books. Fortnite balls? The... I was completely thrown off by Fortnite balls. I forgot what I was saying. Maybe the puppet is in the box. Because in the books, right, in the books the box has charlie emily who's henry's daughter that has um like the robot body like you said and then if if you go to if you try and look at what the game lore ver equivalent of that would be it would be the security puppet and the security puppet comes in a box in the first place anyway like that's kind of the thing about it so maybe it is the puppet and it was supposed to tie in with like the parallels between the book lore, which was probably being written at some point during FNAF 4. It was being written at least. I'm just gonna put down has the puppet, robot body, the souls, or the lore. <laughs> Cause who really knows what's in the box, man? Who really knows what's in the box? Maybe there's an Xbox 360 in there. I mean, that'd be sick. I want to do a stream where I get a replica of the FNAF 4 box and I open it up. And I haven't figured out what I want to have inside of it, but it's going to be really funny. What if Scott's in the universe and he is God? I mean, he's definitely in the universe. Um, isn't that, wouldn't that be sacrilege? He's Christian, right? Wouldn't he be like a false prophet or something? I don't know. Hydro Thunder Arcade. 
Honestly, if I bought a Hydro Thunder game and got some of my friends to like, the stream would be individual like GoPro cams over over there. Oh my God, I have to do this at some point. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.